Welcome everybody uh, to this edition of the High Under Wisdom webinar series. Um, I'm going to kick it over to the golf course and let Michelle and Jeff do some introductions. Um, like I said, if you have questions throughout, feel free to type them in the chat box and we'll make sure those questions get answered. Um, if you're watching on Facebook, you can also post the questions there um, and we will answer those as well. So I'll kick it out to the golf course. Hey guys, thanks for joining us today. Uh, we've got Radford Women's Golf Coach Jeff Beeler here with us. He's going to um, try and help my golf game a little bit. <laughs> uh, welcome. Uh, I think one thing that uh, golfers sometimes fail to realize is the importance of the short game, importance of chip shot, importance of putting, and in general, shots inside of 100 yards. When you go back and track around, uh, golfers don't often think about how many shots they take around the green. From about 75 yards and in, golfers can hit up to about 60% of their shots in a round from 75 yards and in. And around the putting green, chip shots, you know, most of your shots come from there. Putting, 42% of your shots in a round of golf come from the putting green. So it's, it's very important to work on those type shots and practice them. I know a lot of the weekend golfers, average players, they don't get a lot of time to practice when they do. Sometimes they just leave the office. They'll head straight to the driving range and they'll just hit balls for an hour. Where in reality, if you want to improve your game, focusing inside of 100 yards is, is where you need to spend the most time. During our practice sessions uh, with our team, most days we spend probably an hour and a half around the greens and then hit balls for a short distance, short amount of time. PGA players, if they go out and practice for six hours a day, probably four hours are inside of 100 yards uh, just to make sure that they are staying sharp and uh, have the ability to dial in those scoring clubs. So what we're going to work on today, I'm going to show Michelle here some basic technique and fundamentals for uh, a little chip shot around the green. Most beginners, um, I don't like to say amateurs all the time because there's plenty of amateurs out there that have a lot of game and can actually compete with some of the best players. But most beginners, uh, weekend golfers, I like to call them, they get their one or two rounds a weekend. Their tendencies around the green with chip shots and pitch shots are to either, either hit it fat or skull it. And what I mean by hitting it fat is if we're to set up to a chip, and I'm sorry, I'm not able to go through the full technique and fundamentals. I'm dealing with a bummed wrist right now. Um, so when we say hit a shot fat, a fat shot in golf, doesn't matter if it's a full swing, chip shot, pitch shot, bump and run, bunker shot. A fat shot in golf is normally when our club bottoms out and hits somewhere behind the golf ball. When you see a full swing and somebody taking a full swing on the course and you see the divot fly and you see a divot, that divot actually takes place right after impact. The divot does not take place before you strike the golf ball. The divot actually takes place here where the golf ball was and moves forward. So tendencies for golfers when they hit chip shots and pitch shots their misses are either a fat shot where the club bottoms out and the bottom of the arc is before the golf ball, a scald shot, thin shot, sometimes you hear they say knife it, is when you actually hit the center of the golf ball. That causes a low runner, hard skipping shot. Short game has, um, there are people that have nightmares about the short game throughout their career. It's ruined careers. Uh, it, it, it causes, it's a very easy thing to lose confidence with with your short game. But it's also one of those things that can save you as well. So what I'm going to teach Michelle here is the basics. Simple shots with technique that all players of all levels use. But it's so easy that you might look back after this webinar and you might go, wow, maybe it was not that tough after all. So Michelle, former softball player, former coach, um, I'm going to show her the basic fundamentals, show you all the basic fundamentals of hitting a chip shot. Chip shot is a shot that carries along in the air. We're not looking to carry it a huge distance, but what we're looking to do 
is running along the green a little bit more than you say a pitch shot that we want to carry a little bit further, stop a little bit quicker. So in this shot, I always think that the pitch shot, less lofted clubs, pitching wedge, gap wedge, nine iron, eight iron, clubs like that around the green are a much better club to go to if you don't have the confidence, technique, and skill level of some of the higher ranked players. So what we're going to look to do with this shot is we're just looking to play enough loft, carry the ball onto the green right here, run it that far. Okay, so that's a chip shot. Okay, so what I'm going to show Michelle here is Michelle's going to set up to it, and we're going to set up to it with a little bit narrower stance than what we're used to, okay? We're going to set our club towards the target line. Now, the ball is usually, when you hit a chip shot, everybody's bottom of their arc is different. It's different for a lot of people's full swing. It's different for pitch shots and chip shots. Full swing, some players, the bottom of their arc is more forward in their stance. Um, we're going to show you how to have a chip shot pitch shot that's going to be middle of your stance slightly back. Our stance is going to be a little bit more narrow than you would have in a full swing. We're going to pull our left toe back right here and have just a slight open stance like you are right there. Okay. Now, when you're hitting a chip shot, okay, you're going to stand a little bit taller, but the most important thing that you have to do is we're going to move our weight towards our left side. Some say 70%, 30%. I like to say 65%. So 65% of our weight knee flex is going to be on our left side. We're going to choke down on the club just a little bit here, okay? And our hands are going to be forward. Now, when you're hitting this type of shot, you notice this shaft of my club is going right up my left arm, okay? For the shot that we're going to hit first, it's going to stay like that at impact and throughout the stroke, okay? Now, the butt of the club will also tell us a lot of different things here. If I were to take a T here, and I were to put it into the butt of the club, okay? And I were to take this, and it will show you how the ball is going to react and how the ball is gonna fly. So if I stick a T in the butt of my club, and I wanna hit a low runner, a low chip shot, kind of a bump and run shot, at impact, this T is going to be facing away from me, not quite at the target, but kind of behind me. If I wanted to hit a higher shot, this T right here, my hands might be here at impact, the club will be here, the T will be facing more towards me. Okay, so the butt of the club is telling us a lot here, it's kind of connected to the face of the club. If I wanted to hit a higher shot, okay, when I come through at impact, my hands are going to come through this way. The T is going to be facing more towards my right side, even behind me on the other side. So the kind of butt of the club can help you with the loft when you're out practicing. So come on up here, Michelle. Okay. No pressure. Come on. You've played softball in front of thousands of people yes, before, right? Yes. Okay. All right. So Michelle, when she sets up to it, she's going to set up with slightly open stance. Okay. Ball's going to be middle of the stance, slightly back. So we're going to slide back just a little bit. Okay. Face of the club's going to be right towards our target. Okay. Here like this. And we want to remember, we're going to turn that toe in right here because we're looking to hit a lower shot. Okay. So you're going to back up just a little bit. We're going to keep our hands forward. Okay. Right down this left arm here. And we're going to take a motion here. When we go back, she's going to hold on to the club. Okay, when we go back, now, when we come through an impact, we're not looking to turn the toe over. We're not looking to flip the club like this and add loft. She's not going to fall backwards and try and lift it. That's what a lot of golfers do nowadays. They want to lift the ball. Okay, they think we've got to lift it. They think, I'm going to flip it up like this. I'm going to fall back. That's what causes the fat shot. That's what causes the thin shot. So right here, okay. Back up just a little bit, knees forward, okay, weight 65, club face at our target. Now, no pressure, okay, <laughs> let's see how we do for the first one. Oh, it's okay, we, got to, we, have, we have to start somewhere, okay, 
Remember, it's important to, con it's important to con uh, keep consistent tempo. Another thing that'll cause a fat shot is if we decel, which means we slow down. You actually hit a chip shot with more of a descending blow. Okay, so back up just a little bit, then up right there, wait forward, okay? You gotta trust it. You have to see a good shot when you're hitting shots. Hey. That's pretty good teacher right there. That's pretty good yeah. there. All right, same thing. Okay. Now, a lot of a lot of times it's a good idea to go ahead and try and pick an area on the green where you want the ball to land. So I don't want okay. too much loft. I no. want it to just get exactly. Right in. We're just hitting this loft right here because we've got this fairway that's kind of you know patchy okay. it's not going to roll smooth we're just trying to carry the ball up in here okay same thing try and keep this connection right here between the shaft and your left arm all right not bad okay now one thing that you're doing you're not feeling everything is pretty good right now with your lines and straight lines and going towards your target and your direction. Now, let's see if we can get more of a descending blow, but more of a crispy shot to where you actually feel the ground. So go ahead and take a, okay, all the way through though, okay? Good, just like that. Now, exactly like that, but not quite as big of a swing. We're just trying to hit this shot about 15 yards. Good, ground balls, I was gonna say. <laughs> Now, chip through the ball, not at the ball. And I'll tell you that later too when we work on some putting, okay? Go ahead and take your, pretend like there is a golf ball right there, okay? Hands forward just like that, stand up a little taller. Now, I want you to pretend like there's a golf ball right there. I want you to brush, not necessarily the top of the grass, but brush through the grass all the way through it, okay? Keep going through it. Okay, again. Now, if I were to put a golf ball right there, if you have to back up and adjust to it accordingly, that's fine, okay? Do the same thing. I just, I'm Different. facing that way, so that's me. That's okay. That's me. That was a good distance, though. All right, same thing. Brush, the, brush through the grass along the top of the ground. Okay, keep that club face right towards your target line, okay? All right, put the ball back down there. Hands forward, all right, right there. Brush through the grass. Perfect. All right, Get a couple there. more. Okay. Same thing. We stay consistent with our technique here, okay? Brush through the grass along the top of the ground. Okay, a lot of our flaws in golf, I'm a I'm a big believer in this. Uh, a lot of the flaws and our bad habits and bad shots will actually occur before you either take the club back. Okay, so they can occur basic fundamentals, grip, setup, alignment, things like that. The list could go on and on. So it's always important if we can get in the proper setup and have, you know, good visuals, good swing thoughts, positive vibes. You know, good things will happen. I, I'm sure on the softball field and during, throughout your career, you had some times where you got into a hitting slump. Mm -hmm. They occur. And you would probably psych yourself out before you even got up to the plate, putting so much pressure on yourself, you grip the bat a little bit tighter, dig in a little bit deeper, whatever it might be. And you had negative thoughts and you just told yourself, I know I'm not going to get hit. Okay. Same thing with golf. If you have negative thoughts, bad vibes, no confidence, no commitment, bad things are going to happen. Okay. Right there, you hit three good shots in a row. Now you're like, hey, I've got this down tight. <laughs> okay, same thing. Brush the grass, brush through it. Okay, same thing. Wait forward, quiet lower body. Brush through the grass, top of the ground. Okay, now, same thing. we put a golf ball here. All right, set up to it. Same exact thing. Oh, good one. Been out here 15 minutes and you're already <laughs> hollering for it to go in. All right, yeah, same point. thing, same thing. Fresh top of the grass, okay? 
Okay, quiet lower body, weight 65 to 35 on our left side. Okay, again. Okay, good. We're starting to find where the bottom of that arc is, and we want to hit right before the bottom of that arc. Got to decel a little bit. Hey, that's okay. All right, pick them up and do it again. Like I said, if anybody has any questions, feel free to hop on here. Uh, you, if you're watching on Facebook, you can type them in the comments there. If you're watching on Zoom, you can always uh, type them in the comments there, and we'll be sure to ask Jeff all the questions. Yes, any questions are welcome. Anything that you uh, – if we have some – I'm sure we have some golfers on here. Obviously, you wouldn't be watching if you weren't a golfer unless you're a fan of Michelle. So if you have any questions, things that you uh, – flaws or mistakes that you tend to make on the golf course or practicing, please chime in. Okay, same thing, okay? Let's see, how, let's see if we can continue working it. All right, same thing. I want you to take your, the practice stroke like you were doing, okay? Make sure, now, it's also important, I fight with my, uh, I don't want to say I fight with him, but one of the things that I'm working on my, with my son right now, he's 14, he's just picked up the game recently over the last couple of years. One of his flaws that we have, that we are continuously working on is I always want to make sure when he's taking his practice swing or taking his practice putt or he's taking his practice chip or pitch shot, I always want to make sure that he is aligned with his target. One of the reasons we do that is because the grounds are all different. It's not flat. Golf courses aren't flat. But we also want to be able to see our target line when we look up there. So it's important when we aim, one of the ways that we can aim is go ahead and set our club on our target line, okay? In my, I like to put the right foot down. Some people like to put the left foot down because it kind of keeps them more closed. Most people put the right foot down, okay? Club going down our target line, right foot is gonna run parallel with our target line, but just left, okay? So then we can see what we have here. We're also, when we're taking our practice swing, we can feel the ground, okay? If I were to take the practice swing over here and close or open up, I am not feeling the stroke of the ground, okay? So you, when you were taking those practice chip shots right there, you were starting to feel, okay, this is the bottom of my arc right here. I feel the club going through the grass and across the top of the ground. You know where, knew where the bottom of your arc was right there, okay? So come back up here, set up to it, okay? Club face like so, down your target line, right foot, I like to put that one out here now. Right foot, if I were to take a club and go a little bit left, it's gonna run parallel like that, okay. okay? Now, bring the club here, put our feet together just like this, all right? Then we're ready to go, okay? So same it makes thing. makes it sound so easy. Go ahead, Keep, go ahead and take your practice strokes, okay, practice chip. Cut through the top of the grass, just across the top of the ground. Perfect. Okay. Put the ball right back. You've got to adjust accordingly to where you need to go. It's been tricky on this. Okay. shorter shots, but sometimes we think, oh, it's not that far, I'm going to get lined up. But yes, people do have the tendency to aim right, pull their shot back left, okay? So, one thing that is very important with alignment is we draw an imaginary line toward our target, okay? Live webinar. <laughs> Sorry. If we, draw, if we draw an imaginary line towards our target, okay? It's always easier to aim at something a closer distance, okay? So, if I draw an imaginary line towards my target, maybe a yard in front of me, there might be a patch of dirt, there might be a leaf, there might be a different coloration of grass. 
on that line, so right here, okay, there's a little white piece of cell on the graph. If I put my club and line it up with that, which is on my target line, then all of a sudden I'm lined up with something that is 15 yards away. You know, driving range, sometimes hard to line up on a driving range because there's not many targets. Line up on that driving range, we have the tendency to move away from our target line. Focus on something in front of us, okay? So, what is one thing that you're noticing with the golf ball as it's rolling along the green up there? Where are they all in the shot? To the left. To the left. And the reason why is not because you're getting a bad shot. You're actually getting a great shot. But the reason why is the green rolling to the left, right? So, now we have to just move our target line a little more to the right. Let it play. Let the green play. Should I turn my body to line up like a hole in the You're going to do the same thing. Exactly. You're going to do the same thing that you were doing your alignment and aim, but instead of hitting a shot directly at the flag, you're going to want to hit a shot more along here. Let gravity do its work, okay? Okay. Oh. <laughs> now, what was that there? Detail, right? Yes. Okay. I got I got scared. Don't get scared. Can't play this game scared. Can't play this game angry. Go back. Now, set up the way you would for where you're going to hit this chip shot, okay? Right. Ball's going to be about middle of your stance, okay? You're going to through it, okay? Good. Okay. Okay. Are you that first no. terrible, terrible shot? So glad that was off camera. <laughs> forward. Perfect. Now, take the alignment, flip it, get a little too close there. Okay, great. Right now, on this one, you did. Okay, so that's why I say, friendship chip through the golf ball. Not at the golf ball. The golf ball is still our target, okay, with the club, but we want to go through the golf ball. Sorry. A lot of people in this world take all six of those shots. Quiet lower body, weight 65, 35, okay. Keep that shaft going right up our left arm right here. Okay, go ahead and set up, get a line. Ooh, tell okay. myself, pull that one. Hold it inside, that's all right. Okay. All right. Let's pick these up and we'll go down here to the bottom. I think you've got to cut some grass up here. The joys of doing some live webinars, you run into some issues like this. So we're going to take a quick break as they move. Um, I do I do see a couple questions here, so we'll definitely get Jeff to answer those uh, maybe while we're walking. Hey, Jeff, I, I do see some familiar names on here. Uh, maybe some of your own players are asking some questions. So they want to know, and you might get to it, but they want to know what drills you suggest to improve your bump and run shots. Okay. And then... Um, what are your what's your sh yours and your college players go to shots around the green? Okay, we'll go down here away from the mower.
And to everybody listening, whether you're listening on Facebook or watching on Facebook or watching on Zoom, uh, feel free to ask any questions um, in the comments and in the, in the chat box, and we'll definitely get those questions answered for you. So uh, one of the drills that I like um, any golfer to use is this, this will help eliminate, you know, that fat shot that we're talking about, the thin shot, the shot that is not uh, crisp, solid contact. You take have an alignment rod. You can do it with a towel. You can do it with a golf club. But if you set up as if you're going to hit a bump and run shot, nine iron, eight iron, bump and runs can also be done with pitch and wedge. They can be done with any club. It's just the shot that's going to run low along the greens. If you set up with an alignment rod off your right foot and adjust the, the golf ball accordingly, okay, And what this will allow you to do is it will allow you to hit that more of a descending blow. Now, when I say descending blow, we're not looking to hit a shot where we're chopping down at it, okay? We're looking to hit a shot right before the bottom of my arc. Now, the bottom of my arc is when I am making contact with the ground, okay? So if we set an alignment rod just off our right foot, some people like to say four inches away from the ball, five, Everybody's a little different, but if we'll, we set up with it like this, we take that shot, we're not going to fall back. We fall back, we'll hit the stick. You can set up a towel right here. You might hit the towel. So that's a good drill to do for any type of shot like that. As far as shot for uh, our athletes, our players on our team, I like their go-to shot. I like them to hit the shot that they're most comfortable with, okay? In pressure situations, I know I've got a couple players that like to use more law. I'm not always in favor of that, but it's what they're comfortable with. It's their go-to shot. If they go to use a club that they're not as comfortable with, it might not end well. So uh, I think the only time that you should use a lob wedge in my eyes, you know, 58 degrees, 60 degrees lob wedge is when you're in trouble. You got to hit it high. You got to land it soft. Um, but I do have a couple girls on the team that like to use that lob wedge more times than not because that's what they're comfortable with. I'm okay with it. It's good to always have a go-to shot. Another thing that I think is very important that the name of golf right now is not how pretty it looks. It's never been as pretty as it looks. It's always about what you're going to write down as far as your score. So anytime you can put a putter in your hand, you might be a foot or two into the rough right here just have this little bit of fairway to putt through. Anytime you can put a putter in your hand, you're not going to hit the putt as bad as you would a chip or a pitch shot. So it's always good to go to a putter just because yeah. you, miss it. it's, you don't want to miss it terribly. Okay. All right. Now we're, we've got a little bit of time left. One thing that we're going to work on is the most important part of the game, putting. So. One thing about putting is I think one thing that is very important with golf in general is you might watch the game and sometimes say, well, that person doesn't look very athletic. The game of golf has come a long ways. People are working out now. You see more and more fit players. Even with putting, it's important that you're still athletic. It's more of a motion where you feel like you're kind of standing over it and you're stiff, but in reality, we still want our hands to be loose. We want to have a pretty good base, but there's all different types of way to, ways to putt. Okay. Let the trap go by. So, putting, I like to set up with a, a closer stance not as much knee bend, a little bit more thin at the waist. And both thumbs straight down the shaft is what I think is the proper way. Now, there are all different grips. There's all different techniques. The most important thing, though, is getting this blade in a straight line with our target back at impact. Okay? Now, when we grip the club, you see right here, flat spot, thumbs straight down. I like to use what's called a reverse overlap. So if I take my left, finger, left hand right here, 
my pointer finger like this, and I'll take that and actually run it over top of my right hand, and then we go straight down the shaft right there. That's how I like to do it right there. Also think it's important to grip the putter lightly, but you also want to grip it more in your fingers than in the palms of your hands, okay? okay. So come over here. Let's see what we're working with, Michelle. Whoa. Now, most important thing putting. The most important thing putting, speed control, okay? When you're putting, if I set you up for this putt right here, chances are I can bring a beginner out here that's never picked up a club. They're not going to miss it over here. They're not going to miss it over here, but they could miss, miss it, back. it back here, okay? Speed control, okay? You're never going to miss a putt too far offline, at least I hope not to where it would cause a longer putt for your second shot. But you could miss a putt wayward because of speed control, okay? So this is Michelle's first putt of the day. She hasn't been out here to test the speed of the green. Okay. okay, quiet lower body, quiet upper body. Now look, sometimes I like to say with beginners, okay, if you were to set up to it like this quietly, I'll put the putter and rest it up against our hip right here like this, I would take my hand like this, go like this, it's kind of a good deal, right? That's perfect. Now, if you do that with the putter in your hand here, and it's the same exact thing that I was just teaching you up there, even more so right here, you're going to putt through the ball, not at the ball. Okay? So go ahead. We're going to pretend like we're going to hit a, a putt to that. Go ahead and actually, we're not going to pretend we're going to let you do this. Okay? Ball's going to be about just inside of your left foot. Okay? Get comfortable if you need a backup, son. Go ahead and putt one at that hole. Okay, now, speed control, right? Right. Now you know. All right, do it again. Just like aim a little bit left this time, because that one just broke a little right on you. Okay, now, mind and body is telling you, okay, I hit that one a little too hard, we're getting a little closer okay. here. Okay, same thing. Can't play this game angry, right? That's right. Oh. Aim a little left here, okay. <laughs> All right, couple more. We can it? We we cannot end on a miss. Hey Jeff, I do have a. Uh, Brian wants to know what what tips do you have for reading the greens? Reading the greens. So reading the green, I always like to when you get on a green. I always like to look at the lay of the land. So sometimes when you walk up to a green and you see a putt, you'll be able to tell yourself right away, okay this putt's gonna break a couple feet one way or another. There are putts a lot of times where, even when I'm coaching and I'll look at our player and I'll say, I got no clue. But if I were to guess, it would go this way. It's always important to look at the green. We see this green right here. The highest point of the green is actually over towards this rock right here where the bench is and the green's going this way. And then I'm gonna look at the other side of the green. I'm gonna say, okay, the highest point of the green is over there. So we know that where Michelle is putting this ball right here, uphill, and it's gonna break a little bit to the right. <laughs> you can also kind of, um, when you're playing in the south, you can tell which way a green might break from the grain of the grass. You know, in the south, there's Bermuda greens, which the grass is gonna lay a different direction. But also just picture if you were to take a bucket of water, toss it on the green, which way is the water going to run off the green? Okay, that's going to also help you with which way. And did we get that one on camera? <laughs> that's going to help you with which way the ball is going to roll. It's also important that you putt towards your line with your break. Don't putt towards the hole. Don't aim towards the hole. So Michelle's been over here hitting a few putts at this hole. She's starting to figure it out. She knows this putt's a little uphill and it's going to break a little right. Okay, so Michelle's not going to aim at the hole and try and putt it on line. She's going to aim on line where she's thinking, okay. Maybe this putt's a left edge putt aiming towards my putter right here. She's gonna putt it down this line. Let gravity do the work. Let the green make it break. Don't you try and make it break. All right, couple more. Let's end on a make. Uh, I just made one. Oh, you gotta make another one. <laughs> All right, one more. Okay. Put through the ball, okay? Don't steer it. 
we come through here, I'm trying to be as simple as I can with you, okay? Go ahead and hold on to the putter. When we come back through the ball, okay, this putter, you want to release the putter here. See how your hands are there? Mm -hmm. That's not bad right there, okay? So go ahead, hit one down that target line. Good visual, tell yourself, okay, this was going in. Almost, same thing. Let's get it started a little bit more length. Right here. There we go. All right. Any other we questions? A, we do have a couple more questions for you. Okay. Um, one was, do players, do most players gravitate towards fatter putter grips or is there a regulation um, at your level? Um, it all depends. Most players have a standard grip. You are starting to see um, over the last 10 years, a fatter grip. And what that fatter grip is designed to do is take your hands out of the stroke. Um, I don't mean this in a bad way, but if you start seeing a putter that's got a bigger grip, those players have probably at some time in their career been yeah. struggling putters, okay? So what they're looking to do is they're looking to take the hands out of the grip and they're looking, maybe they fought the yips, okay? I always like to say, and I, I believe this for a fact, and you hear it all the time, that, you know, the three and four foot putt will keep hundreds and hundreds of guys off the tour each year just because they've struggled mentally. They might set up, and when they make their stroke, they might, you know, their hands take over. I don't know what it is. There's just kind of like your brain, you're scared. It's it, it's it's a yip stroke. So that's why you're starting to see bigger putter grips. You're also starting to see different grips where you know you've got the saw. People are looking to take their right hand out of the stroke. You've got the claw grip like that. Left hand low. So there's all types of grips that uh, you know they just use for what they're comfortable with. All right. So next question: What's more important to you, a good stroke or a good read, or are they equally as important? I think a good stroke's more important. Uh, you know, a good read, you can, you can only be so precise with your reads. You know, I don't want to say it's a guessing game, but it is, there is a, an art, a science to it. A good stroke is, you know, there's a lot of bad strokes, but a good stroke, at least you're telling yourself that you've got the confidence and you, you know that you're a good putter and that's half the battle. Okay, one more. Uh, the, the other one was just a um, question. When you guys were chipping, Michelle, what um, club were you using? That was an A wedge. Yeah, gap wedge. Okay. About 53 degrees loft. Okay. And you can do that same technique with uh, – you can do that same technique, stand a little bit tall. You can do it with a pitching wedge, 9-iron, 7-iron, 8-iron. They all work. Awesome. Well, I think that's all the questions I can find right now. Um, so I want to say thank you to uh, Jeff and thank you to Michelle for being a trooper and being our test dummy today. Um, it's been it's been fun learning some of these tricks. Um, and so I want to give a little plug for next week, next Wednesday at 6 p.m. We will have another um, education based webinar um, with Kim Regis and Megan Hawley, the principal and vice principal over at Auburn Elementary School. Um, they're going to be doing a joint um, webinar for us. So if you do have any questions uh, at the uh, at now, feel free to email us at alumni at and we'll definitely get them over to Jeff and get them answered for you. So thanks again, Jeff, for, for helping us out today and teaching us a little bit. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Go Highlanders. <laughs>